again. I'm in my kitchen and uh, I'm doing some cooking. And uh, around here uh, we have what's called tomato pie. Now, some people might call it pizza, but it's far different than pizza. It's um, a certain way to make the crust, a certain way to make the to put the uh, ingredients on, and there's a whole science about it. Now, what I'm going to tell you is that back in the 50s, my father would take me to have tomato pie, and he would go. We take he take me to a place called Di Lorenzo's, which was in the middle of the Italian section in Trenton, and um, we would have our pies and whatever. And to tell you the truth. Up until the middle to late 60s, I never heard of any other kind of pizza, if you will, other than tomato pie. It's the only thing I ever knew. And then somewhere in the 70s, these other types of pies coming in and all these different, uh, this pizza and that pizza guy and this pizza rama and whatever. And uh, it just really kind of destroyed the idea of having a tomato pie. So uh, I'm about here, and I always wanted to know how to make a tomato pie. I always tried to make a tomato pie. I never really had anybody teach me. And then along come the Internet. Well, there's fellows on there, and if you want to look it up on Facebook, it's called Trenton Tomato Pie, nothing else. Authentic Trenton Tomato Pie, nothing else. And if you look that up, you'll see on there some of my pictures of my pies that I made. And I'm just starting now. One thing i got to tell you is that I don't claim to be any kind of pizza pie maker. I just started doing this two weeks ago. So I'm not good at the dough. I'm getting it, and uh, I'm getting better. And the pies, the last pies that I made were awesome. They were perfect. And my goal, really, is to make an authentic Di Lorenzo-style tomato pie. Um, I used to watch Gary Amico's, the owner, was the owner for years, uh, a little quick history on that uh, Di Lorenzo, Chick Alexander, Chick Di Lorenzo, went to school with my dad, and so they knew each other fairly well, and we would go in there, and of course Chick was making the pies, and then in the 60s, Gary came along, and he lived up in uh, another section of Trenton, and he worked there, and he eventually married uh, Chick's daughter, and uh, they had a son, and now son, the Sam, the son, is running in the running the, the business, and they moved out of Trenton, and they moved into the suburbs, which I can't blame them for that. They, you know, the progress. But anyway, I used to stand there and watch Gary make these pies, and Gary make the pies, and I'd watch him and watch him and watch him, and I said, i got to try this. I want to do it, but I don't know the recipe. I don't know how to put everything together. And uh, along, like I said, along came the Internet, and voila, there it is. People telling you how to do it, telling you to make it. So it encouraged me to try. And uh, here I am now making pies. And I'm having a ball doing it. And the last two pies I made were pretty damn good. So we'll see. So anyway, to start off, I always have the traditional glass of wine. Salud. That's good. Put that over here for later. And um, the dough. Well, the dough. My opinion, there's three things that make a pie. Well, first of all, back to Gary. I would listen and I'd watch him and I'd watch him and I'd watch him. And one day, I mean, this is like 40 years ago. I says, Gary, how do you make a tomato pie? And the only answer I got was, and he's pounding the dough and he's putting the stuff on the And he says, well, Davey, he says, it takes an IQ of 54 to make a pizza. Now, he wasn't trying to put, put pizza guys down, but what he was saying was that it's not that hard. And if, if you know what to do, it's really not that bad. It's not that bad. And I'm practicing. I'm getting better. And uh, I plan on uh, being able to make a good tomato pie in the future. I'm, I'm making a pretty good one now. But anyway, the dough. The dough is important. The dough is important, and what I found out was the first few pies I made, um, they were a little bit on the crunchy side, like almost like a cracker. When you crush them, they go, Pew! they would just disintegrate, uh, like they were a hundred-year-old bread. 
and I wasn't too happy with that. I wanted a, something a little more chewy, but not doughy. And I read a lot about it, and what I found out is they have what's called um, baker's percentages. For different kinds of doughs, you put different amounts of water to make a different type of crust. Meaning that if you're making an artisan bread, you want a little more tough. If you want an Italian bread, it's a little bit different. If you want to make uh, saltine crackers, it's different. So there's different kinds of doughs. And what I've determined is I need a 65% hydration. Now, hydration is the water, obviously. So it's based on the flour, 100% of flour. So if you want to make a 65% hydration, it's 65% of water. So if you've got 100 pounds of flour, 100 pounds, we'll do, do that, you want to put 65 pounds of water. And then, of course, the yeast, uh, about two pounds, and so on and so on. You know, it's two pounds of salt, two pounds of sugar, two pounds of two, two, and two. So now, I make my dough. Well, I took three cups. Somebody said, put three cups of flour. And by the way, I'm using what's called King Arthur bread flour. It's unbleached, unbleached bread flour. And you can buy this just about anywhere. Uh, I read some other stuff about it. I'm going to try some different breads, uh, bread doughs, uh, bread flours, rather. Uh, gold metal makes a good one. I'm going to try a few others. Uh, but so far, I've been using this. I'm going to stick with it for now. Uh, platinum yeast. One packet of active dry yeast. You need a measuring cup, of course. You need a thermometer, because I ain't no genius. I don't know how cold. I don't know how to put my finger in there. I don't know how cold. Hot or cold. So you got a thermometer. That's what they make them for. You need a scale, like it's here. Some kind of scale. You need a bowl of some kind to put the stuff in, the flour. And we'll use this bowl right here. And uh, that's about it. I mean, and of course you need a good mixer. Now I got I got the KitchenAid mixer. This is my dad's mixer. And uh, he used to make, uh, he'd been dead for 23 years. He, he used to make, uh, he used to make uh, Roman cheese bread. And I'm going to make that too someday. But this is what he used to make it. Because he couldn't buy it. Now you can buy it, uh, different places, but he used to make it. And um, you got to have a dough hook. Now, I, I came with this kind of a dough hook, right, this kind. But what I found out with this one is it bats it around in there like you're throwing a bowl all over the place. I had to hold the thing down. So I went down to Bed Bath & Beyond. So this is the Beyond. I got this here dough hook. It's like a spiral, and this works pretty good to knead the dough. Okay, we're going to get into all that. All right, so now the first thing you got to do, first thing you got to do is open your flour. So you want to open it so I don't ruin it. That's like, you know, rocket science for you, right? Open a flour box. Maybe you need the measuring cups, of course. I got to get those. I mean, I'm having a ball doing this, really. This is something I always, always wanted to do. I always wanted to make pizza, tomato pie. And uh, we're going to do the whole thing. You ain't going to believe it. You're not going to believe it when I get it done. When I get it done, you're not going to believe it. All right, here's the cup. One cup. Don't matter. It goes by pounds. We're going to put 16 ounces of flour. We're going to put one pack of dry active yeast. And a percent of 16 to make a 65% hydration. And it does matter about... The humidity. Okay, so we got the humidity. I got to work on that part of it to find out what the humidity is. As far as the water, and they say the water is no good, you go down to Florida. I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure about that, but I'm going to do an analysis on that and find out. But uh, you need a measuring cup. And to, one, to 16 ounces of flour, you're going to use 10.4 ounces of water, which comes out to a cup and a quarter of lukewarm water. Should be 105 to 110 degrees, and that's why I got this little bunch of got a little pier. All right, all right. So you go over here to the sink, and what I do is I put really hot water in for about a cup, and then I measure it, and then come back with a with a cup of water here, and just and just kind of temper it. All right, that's one cup now. Okay, so we will put this in here and see what happens. Going up. Then we're going to have to cut down on the water. Alright, right now, it's 
just about 110 right now. Let's see if it goes over. Now at 8. Okay, so put a little bit more in there till we get a cup and a quarter. That's a cup and a quarter right there. Let's see what it does. Give it a minute or two to saturate. All right, now we're going to put the yeast in. Well, that's... Let me just, I just throw it right in here. I don't know how to cut the... Just cut it, I guess. And you put it in. Now, you guys out there that are on the site, uh, that are making the pies and run the site, you know, I hope you're not laughing at me. But, you know, remember, you guys have been making them for a while, and I haven't been making them that long, so... I'm not putting light on the subject, but I'm doing it, and I'm making them. And here's the video. Okay, so right now we got a hundred and yeah, it's under under a little bit, under about 105, 105 degrees. So we're going to pour the water in, and that's going to activate the uh, the yeast. But in order to do that, we got to put a little sugar in there. So I'm going to use three ounces of sugar, which comes out to about one tablespoon. This is a tablespoon right here. One at one level. And you want to put a pinch. You want to do it that way. You want to do it. Oh, look at that. Dummy. Okay, just like that. You spread that in there. Spread that in there. Okay. That's it. All right, that's it. No more sugar. Yeast needs something to, to eat on. They're feeding them. Now you're going to need this. Now, I need the bread flour, so let's get the flour. All right, you put this on a scale. You put what's called tear weight, which tear weight means the whole thing. Okay, zero. Now we're going to put 16 ounces of flour in here. Now, by the way, this is going to make two 13 ounces, 13 or so ounces of doughs. So make two doughs, enough to make two pies. I got the, okay. 11 right now, 14, 15, 35, okay, 16. Now we might need, we're going to leave that open because we might have to add a little flour as we go. So that's one pound of flour, 10 ounces of, 10.4 ounces of water. We're going to put uh, a little salt in there. Now, I, about the salt, I'm going to talk about that for a second. You can use the iodized kosher salt or whatever, yeah, or I just use the regular, this is the kosher salt, and this is the regular salt. I want to use the regular salt because I think, I think it dissolves better in the water. Well, you got to wait. About 15 minutes for that to to uh, to uh, germinate or whatever they call it. I'm going to just very gently, very gently mix it up, very gently. Okay, now just let that germinate. It's going to take a while. In the meantime, I'm getting ready with my salt. That's the next thing. Get ready for salt. I'm going to put I'm going to put one level teaspoon of salt. That seems to be right. First one I did, I put too much salt. According to the recipe that I was received, and I felt that it was so salty I couldn't take it. We're going to also use some olive oil. Olive oil. Everybody cooks with extra virgin olive oil, and that's what you use. I also have vegetable oil, and I also have in my little spray thing. Now, wait, oh, by the way, I'll tell you about these. I got these from Amazon, but you can get them from a really good restaurant supply. These have a seal on the top, and they're grade, uh, food grade. You don't want to use uh, just the square bottle you buy at the dollar store. This has got a seal on it so it can't leak out. And I got one for balsamic vinegar. And I got one for olive oil, like I said. Now the yeast is going nuts in there. It's going nuts. It's got to foam up. So it takes a while. It takes about 15 minutes. In the meantime, I want to talk to you about how we're going to cook this pizza. I'm going to cook it in this oven right here. Right here. Right over here. We're going to cook it in that oven. And that oven is a regular standard oven, and I got it cranked up to 525. And I'm going to open it real briefly so you can see in there. What's in there is one of these.
Home Depot, three dollars and thirty cents. Now this one, the one in there, has a non-glazed top. It's like kind of plain. This one has a glazed top, and I'm going to try it because if you notice the one in there, it has a lot of um, cheese melted on it, and I can't get it off there. So I figured, let me try that one. Now, I also have try to be as professional about this as I have, can. I have the peel. They call this a peel. P-E-E-L. Wood. It's made out of pine. And there's probably some other kind of woods, but you got to keep this uh, smooth. It's got to be smooth. Now, I just took some clean sandpaper and I sanded this because when you wash it down, it gets fuzz on it. And I just took some real nice clean sandpaper and sanded it because otherwise your pies won't slide. So I, I found that out. And I cut the handle off. I cut about six inches off the handle because... It's just too long for in here. And I have that. I bought that from Amazon. You can get that. It was about 20 bucks, $22. And then I also have this little guy over here. This is the thing to take it out. It's also called a peel, but it's a metal one. You could actually buy one. If you're going to want to buy both, you can buy one. I wanted to be as professional as I can about it. Um, that one, we take cornmeal and spread it on there. And it gives the pie a little bit of a taste, too. It helps with the taste of the pie. 